Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to use Keynote on iPad to create pixel art. Why teach pixel art? Well, digital images are actually made of pixels. They're represented by dots of color. A pixel is a, the smallest building block of a digital image. So when students do this activity, they understand how images are created on a computer. This is actually an important part of computational thinking so that they can understand how things work in the digital world. So they can analyze different elements of the image and then they can be creative with color and composition. Keynote is really the best tool to use for this because it has tables, it has formatting tools. It's really versatile. You can even add extra stuff like audio for reflection. And we can export the finished product as a GIF, movie image or PDF. Just note that pixel art is, of course, possible in the other iWork apps as well. But today we're going to focus on Keynote. So again, the aim of the activity is to get students understanding how pixel art works and then they can design their own pixel art and even animate it. As a teacher, you're going to prepare the lesson, prepare the materials. Then we're going to see how you can explain it, how students can practice it. We're going to look at the class task and then we're going to look at the individual task. So how does preparation go? Well, in my case, I prepare a table in Keynote. I use the size, for example, 24 times 24, so 24 rows and 24 columns. And the function we're going to be using is called conditional highlighting with 10 colors, actually 11, because we're going to use zero as a color, as white. And the method we're going to be using is we're going to use a number to fill in a color. It's really easy. I'm going to explain how this is done in the next slide. Hi, I'm now going to show you how to create a table that you can use for pixel art in Keynote. As you can see, I have a already created one here just to show you what it looks like as a finished product. And if I type in any number, then it's going to just automatically change color because I already pre-programmed it already. And to, re to erase, just erase the number to remove the color. So how do you add a table? You add a table by going to plus, adding the table you want. You can add rows and columns. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to add 24 rows, 24 columns. Of course, you can format it however you want, but let's take a look at the conditional formatting. So you have to make sure the whole table is selected. Then you go to the paintbrush. And what you need to do is you're going to say, OK, you add conditional highlights. Number is equal to, let's say, the number 1. We want to make the number 1 it to be black. We want it to be, when you type in the number 1, it's going to be the text color is going to be black. And the cell fill is also going to be black. Yeah. Now we can, we can press Done. We can also just simply just add Rule. Then we're going to go to 2, etc. And we're going to test it later. So 2, let's say we want 2 to be yellow, which is not a problem. We can say 2, we want to text, we're going to change the text color to yellow. And we're also going to change the cell fill color to yellow, the same yellow. So it'll be, it'll disappear, so to speak. So let's test that. Let's type a 1 inside of a cell and see if we did it correctly. Yes, we did. And let's type a 2 in the cell to see if we did it correctly. And we did. Great. So let's see how we can explain this with examples. There are loads of examples on the internet, so you can really take a look at um, any search um, using your favorite search engine. Here are two images that I found. And you can explain that a pixel is exactly what we did we said before. It's a tiny square of color. And you can use these colored squares to make a picture. And you can see what it looks like here. What this picture of a man looks like with different squares of color. I then asked students to practice the basics. So I created a grid already. Here on the left hand side and I have like a picture of an um, example I say well why don't you try to create this car using zero and one and then they type in whatever they think it has to do they have to replicate this car using zeros and ones I show lots of examples so basic forms like hard car or smiley or the even more complex examples that you can find as I said on the web 
I then introduced the class task, which is actually just a simple emoji. And you can really see how this develops in the class. The students are going to experiment. Oh, where do I put this in? Where do I put which color into which square? And they're going to see according to the place. Ah, okay, this is correct. And they're going to have to maybe even correct themselves. So it's a really great example and really great activity for them to explore and to try out. Then they go on to the individual task. And here we see that students can really have fun with their names or they can draw a scene in pixels or they can really just draw anything with a pixel. Of course, I create a template for the students which I, which I send them via AirDrop or I can send it to them via their learning platform. And this template already contains tables with conditional highlighting. If you have students who are more advanced, you may want to ask them to do an additional challenge of even creating their own table with own conditional highlighting. That would be a really great challenge for some. I provided the template link for download, which you can feel free to download and use for your class. A great final step would be for the students to document and reflect on their learning. So you should, of course, export uh, their work and we can even let them view the work of others and comment on them. And what they can do as well is they can record the audio on the finished pixel art to explain how they did it and how it's done. To export as an animated GIF, which is an additional step you might want to do, you just tap on the three dots, you choose animated GIF, you say OK, which slide range do I want, you share, you save the image and it's saved to the library. And it's going to look something like this. So we can really see that it develops as you go. Thank you very much for watching this video and I wish you a lot of luck and all the best with your pixel art with your students.